Nailed it. Hello, this is Ken. I like making things. I like making things out of paper, and I like making things cooler, especially my figures. Sometimes figures don't look all that screen accurate. All they need is a bit of touch up here and there to unleash the hidden potential. I also love using everyday tools and materials to recreate iconic scenes from my figures, so they can shine on my display. Subscribe to my channel and join my DIY adventure as I ask myself the same question every week. Can I make it? Last week, I worked on Giant Man and made the pin particles effect for my Ant-Man figure. Check it out if you haven't already. So I got these Ant-Man and the Wasp figures a couple of months ago when they were on sale. These figures are actually very good. I personally don't see anything wrong with them. They look like the movie counterparts and don't look like kids' toys. But I didn't get them for the longest time because I couldn't figure out a way to display them. There's no point of getting them if they end up in the box. Nowadays, I only buy the figures if I say yes to any of the following three questions. The first obvious one, do I really want these characters? In this case, it's a no for all three. Next, can I fix them? This is also a no, but it's because aesthetically they look really good, very high quality. And lastly, can I make a display for them? And the answer is yes. I have the perfect scene in mind. So, can I make it? Louis Van has played a major role in the first two Ant-Man movies and also in Endgame, especially with the Quantum Tunnel. If I'm able to make the van, then I can use it as an Ant-Man display or even an Endgame display. I'm gonna make it out of paper. It's gonna look a bit boxy, but I think it'll work for an old car. It may look like a simple box here, but it actually took me a couple of days to figure out how to design it so it could be multifunctional. Alright, here's everything printed. Cut, cut, cut. The good thing about boxy design is that they're very easy to fold and glue. But the bad thing about it, especially at this scale, is that it's not going to be super rigid. Let's hope it doesn't warp or fall apart. The challenge for me is to figure out the right size for the van. You may notice a lot of my displays are not to scale. I like them to be compact and simple. The main reason is shelf space. I like displaying my figures in these IKEA's cabinets, so there's a size limit to that. If the display doesn't fit in there, then I have to find another spot for it, so I have to be very conscious of how much space my displays are taking up. The other reason is that I personally think it's equally important to have the prop or display slightly smaller than they should be. It's a visual trick to keep the focus on the figures, giving them that larger than life look. If I were to make the displays one to one, I find that the figures tend to end up looking very toy-like. Back to the van. If I make the van one to one scale to my figures, it's going to be too long visually. But in this case, I can't have it too small either because I want Luis to be able to sit in the van. And most importantly, I want the quantum tunnel to look right. It needs to look like a wide rectangle and not a tall one, nor a square. So there was a lot of math involved in the planning stage. The other challenge is to figure out a way for the doors to open without compromising the integrity of the paper. I could have just made it a literal box without any openable doors, but that would look too basic and takes half the fun out. But because I decided to have the doors on hinges, it means I need the windshield to be transparent too, so I can let light in. Otherwise, it won't look right. Why? Why am I torturing myself? I used a plastic window from the packaging for the windshield. The issue is that white glue doesn't work that well on it, so that took a bit of finessing. I'm surprised the paper didn't collapse on me due to how thin the frame is around that area. Luck is on my side today. And for the doors, I'm gonna add a tap to act as a hinge. Look, it closes. I added small pieces of magnets to keep the doors shut. But let me add the seats in there. Okay, it's getting there. Just have to do the same for the back. It is time to do the wheels. I could have just kept them simple and made them cylindrical. But I love 3D things, so I decided to add a bit of depth to the rims. It is such an unnecessary detail when you look at the overall picture. 
no one is really going to look at the reels. But I believe having a bit of depth on the reels will add a bit more realism to the otherwise boxy van. The only issue is that it's a bit harder to do small curvy folds like this, and I have to do it four times. But I love how they turned out; they look so good. Just have to glue them on. Luckily, the wheels aren't perfectly round, so they are flat surfaces for me to apply the glue. This will also keep the van from rolling away too. All right, the van is almost done. It is looking pretty good so far. All there's left is the roof. Ta-da! Almost there. Let me add the bumpers to the front and the back of the van so it doesn't look too flat. Oh, that looks so much better. Little things that make it that much more three D. I ended up not adding the magnets to the back doors. It's because I realized I'll never display it with them shut. The main reason why I wanted to make this van is because I wanted to make the quantum tunnel. I thought about just having it flat glued onto the back of the van, but that's no fun. It needs to have a bit of depth to it, so it looks like it's sucking you in. But it also can't go too deep, otherwise shadows will form and it'll break the illusion. It needs to look like it's glowing with minimal shadows. Okay, done. That looks so cool. All I have to do now is to put it in the van. But wait, a while ago when I was doing my dollar store run. I saw this magnifying sheet, and I noticed that it has this quantum warping visual effect. So I bought a sheet and saved it for today. Ooh, that looks trippy. Let me cut it to size and attach it using UV resin. Okay, that took a bit of work, but here it is. The edges are a bit rough, otherwise it looks amazing. I love it. All right, the final step: attaching the quantum tunnel. Okay, to keep the momentum going, I'm gonna attempt the pin particles effect again. I wasn't super happy with the ones I did for Ant Man. Maybe it's the red, or maybe it's how flat it looked. I want to try again now that I know how it works. Check out my video from last week if you want to see how I made it using shrink plastic. I'm pretty much repeating the same steps, using the same materials, but just like the van, I want the effect to be a bit more 3D and a bit more dynamic this time, especially for the wasp, who's usually flying in the air. It would be really awesome if I can somehow build a flight stand with this. Ta-da! Here are all the pieces I made. The yellow works much better than the red, in my opinion, because it appears more translucent and not as bold. Now let me figure out the composition I want. I want wasp to kind of zigzag upwards. I don't want to do a straight line this time. I think having a triangular formation will give the structure more strength too. It needs to be able to lift and hold the wasp up in the air. All right, be right back. Okay, here's what the piece looks like. There's a bit of depth and a sense of movement, and I added a little hook piece up here. This is where the wasp will sit. Look at that subtle depth. Okay, moment of truth. Uh, uh oh, the figure is too heavy. Oh no, what should I do? I can't give up now. Okay, I came up with a solution. I added a wider base at the bottom. Not the prettiest or ideal, but it works. Some of you may notice that I almost never use flight stands or display stands. I like to, or at least try to integrate the stand into my displays or hide it as much as possible whenever I have to use one, because I personally find them distracting, even if they are clear. For example, wasp and the fading effect look awesome, but my eyes are constantly drawn to the rectangular base. For me, that looks a bit distracting, but it does get the job done. And it's an improvement from last week, so I'm satisfied. All right, it is time to put everything together, starting with the van. The van actually doesn't look as boxy as I thought, and despite it being made out of paper, it's not as fragile as I thought too. Of course, I still have to be somewhat gentle with it. Okay, let's see if Luis can fit in there. It would be hilarious if he doesn't fit. Oh, 
It worked. Hmm, the seat is a bit too high, but it's not that bad. And yes, there's no driving wheel. It's not like the van can move anyway. Look how happy he is in his van. All right, time for the main event. Let me take Luis out first. Here's the building for him to protect, and we need the villain who wants to steal it. So Ghost goes here, and I have the wasp flying out towards Ghost to stop her. And Giant Man can go right there, double teaming with the wasp. Oh, can't forget Aunt Anthony. Okay, I love this display. Technically, it's not exactly screen accurate. This scene takes place inside the building, but I really like the mini building prop. It gives something Luis to interact with. I also think the original quantum tunnel inside the building isn't as memorable as the one in the van. I prefer the van more. Besides, it acts as a platform for Ghost to stand on, so Ant Man and the Wasp can go towards her. It just makes sense compositionally. Now everyone has a role in this scene, and it's not too much of a departure from the original scene from Ant Man 2. What do you think? Do you like what I've done? Let me know down below. The van also makes a good background prop. It makes the scene look more interesting and adds a bit of perspective. I also love what the magnifying sheet does to the quantum tunnel, especially when the camera is moving. It makes the tunnel look like it's active and sucking things in. There are so many ways to use this van as a prop. The van can technically hold Giant Man's weight, but I wouldn't leave him on the van for too long, just in case. I don't want him to break the quantum tunnel. Otherwise, there will be no end game. All right, let's end this with a photo shoot. Starting with Luis, he looks so proud with his van. They did a great job capturing his personality. Always so positive. I'm gonna display my Ant-Man figures like this. This just looks so good. Great composition, and no one gets overshadowed. Everyone has their own unique color. And the orange fan complements everyone in the scene. It is just perfect. The quantum tunnel looks fantastic. You can put anyone in front of it, and it will make a good photo. It is the perfect prop as a backdrop. It makes everything look so much more interesting. Like there are stakes to the fight now. The pin particle effects for Wasp also turned out great. It did break on me twice in between shots, but that was because I was being clumsy. As long as I'm being careful, it should remain intact. I'm just happy that it allows the wasp to do these elegant, graceful poses. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I only had less than a week to work on it, and in order for me to upload this video on time, I had to skip fixing the wasp suit. But I honestly don't have an issue with the vibrant gold. This video should be published on time. If you're seeing this, it means I did it. This honestly exceeded my own expectations. Give it a like and subscribe to see more content like this. I would really appreciate it. And as always, stay inspired, and I'll see you next week. I can make it, so can you.